So we're just going to do a little tour of the spring border, and maybe a big tour, because it looks absolutely beautiful at the moment. And here we have, um, I'll start here, a, high, um, a rhododendron which was given to me, which doesn't like the soil here, so we feed it with ericaceous liquid feed, which is an iron feed. We've got a perennial cyclamen here, and the lee hellebores here just going over, but they're still really pretty, dusty colour. There's the Fatchy there, the spider's web variety. These are my favourite plants. These are the um, Lunaria. And if you saw them just a couple of weeks ago, they're actually just on the ground, but now they're flowering. Lovely. The sad thing is these will, will go to seed and be finished very soon. There's the daffodils there. More cyclamen. We've got some Brunnera. The blue flowers, the ordinary variety. Now we have here more hellebores. This is a geranium. Look at the little flowers on the leaves. They're always attractive. Now these here, I grew these from seed. These are a type of aquilesia, the McKenna giant hybrids. And they're looking really strong and healthy. Did put a lot in, but not, the all, not all survived because it was so dry last summer. Here's another hellebore and some forget-me-nots there. And there's a hosta just coming up in between here. We've got a hydrangea. Um, left a label on that one, that's called Little Lime. We've got a, this is really testing my plant knowledge now, a begonia. I'm not sure what variety that is, it should stay on the label. I always label everything. This one's called Rotsblum, so I'm not quite sure what colour it is. I'll have to research that one. I always write labels and I always write it in pencil because the ink on these other labels fades off. This is one I showed you last week in the plant descriptions. Hoping that will do well. Persicaria there. And behind that is a Aconitum and a dead looking fuchsia, but it's coming back. There's a pulmonaria, Trevi Fountain. We have a Photinia, crispy, pink crispy. Some alliums there, and in between there, there's some foxgloves, the strawberry kind, Mertonensis, with the furry leaves, so they don't look too good, but I'm hoping they'll pick up. And here we have a Calamaris incisor blue star. That's a beautiful plant. There's one of the yew trees I found growing in the hedge that's going to be trained into a shape. And geranium macarizum variety. Um, this one's Spess Art. They were a little handwritten label in white ink. Just kind of uh, when people come to visit, it helps them understand what we're growing. And there's Pulmonaria, Trevi Fountain here. Some lovely daffodils. There's another clump of um, aconitums. And there we have a nettle in the middle of that one, which I'll have to remember to catch. And that is a forgotten, um, I'll put a, la a name on it later. And we have a little Lamprocapna, so formerly known as Dicentra, Bleeding Heart. And then between, you can just see there, behind there, is a shuttlecock fern, Machuccia strathoropteris. No, I wouldn't want to pronounce that one very often. Another aquilegia I grew there from seed. Some uh, phlox in here. And another fatsia. And then behind here we have a unusual variety of thalictrum. This will get about six feet. This is called black stockings because the stems turn black. And another yew tree there. So when it's really grown up, they'll be punctuating this long border. As you can see, it's a long, long border, and it's only a year old in February, last February. There's another variety of Lunaria. This one's called Chedlow something or other. Chedlow purple, I'm not sure. Came free with another plant, but that's grown amazingly well. Some tulips here, I'm not sure the variety, because it had so many of them. More Hallebores, and there's red, I think that one is. Here's a beautiful sea heart Brunnera. Brunnera sea heart because it's leaves are the shape of a heart. Look at those little flowers. 
We have Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia, Deronicum, I think that might be Little Leo, usual variety, Persicaria, I do believe, or is it something else? I tend to forget there's so many to remember. Another one of my favourites is Euphorbia Polychroma. When these flowers open, they are a bright, bright acid yellow. You can see there. Just starting. That's a train in the distance. We have some sedums. They do go okay because it's fairly shady. And behind there is a beautiful. Oh, what's its name? I'll put it in the description underneath. Anyway, that's going to get tall with the great big flowers. Lots more tulips there. These are, um, I've forgotten their name as well. Some type of um, Darwin variety. And then I put another one of the plants you saw the other day. This is a the Pulmonaria Barfield Pink with the little stripy flowers. And I think you'll agree. It does look a real picture on here. Absolutely beautiful and well worth the effort. The Lord of the Manor yesterday, he, um, <laughs> like me calling him that, he spread the leaf mould all over the beds. So it gives it a beautiful, rich finish and it'll improve the soil structure considerably. And it does look really, really nice. As I'm sure you'll agree, it's well worth the effort. Oh, there's another hosta. Some more for, um, forget-me-nots, self-seeders. There's all sorts of plants at the back as well. There's um, a flower in the autumn, um, asters. A few clumps here and there. I think it's going to look lovely. And when it's um, in a couple of weeks, when the other plants start coming up, it's going to be replaced with the spring stuff. It's going to turn into summer stuff. But the main focus of this border really is on the spring, with a spring emphasis. As you can see from a long view, it's absolutely lovely.